All right, here he is, looking very businesslike. All right, so um, you can see, looks like most of the people I showed you on on the screen, ready for ready for work, suit and tie. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and arrange the lights. I'll talk through it so you guys can see. We are going to be shooting tethered, so let's uh, let's get that set up here. We're just going to be shooting tethered to capture one. Um, I'm using a Nikon D850 with the Profoto Air Remote, so we can control the power of the lights and all that from here. And then I'm using a 50 millimeter lens because it's just nice and neutral. And uh, so I'm going to start. If you want to hop over here for a second, I'm going to set up the lights and then we'll bring you in. So we're going to start off with our main light. And what we have here is the XL Pro Photo umbrella. So you, as you can see, it's a large soft source. Um, it's got the baffle on it. It actually shoots the light into the umbrella and then back through. So it's really soft. Great flattering light, works with any, any person. To, it's just like a giant window. So we're going to start there. Um, I'm going to raise it just slightly. And then I like to tilt all my lights downward a little bit, so that way the closest part of the light is to the forehead. Um, I like that fall off of downward in case you're doing a three-quarter length photo. As you could see in the one earlier, he was lit from head all the way down to the bottom of his hand and just getting nice fall off with the light. So I don't like to waste a lot of light going over the subject. I like to tilt it downward. So we're going we're gonna to do that just slightly. And we're just using C-stands today. A lot of times on location, I don't take C-stands only because they're heavy and a pain. I just take good, solid, uh, almost kit-type stands. Um, but if I could take C-stands on location, I definitely would. So we're going to start off there. That looks good. Um, and we're just going to do the one light. So what I'm going to do is move it in nice and close. Uh, I usually, depending on the size of the room, I always try and stay close enough to the background to be able to light it clear. So that way, when I'm doing my Photoshop work later, the background is clearly lit and easy to extract your subject from the background. But I don't want them so close that they cast a shadow. So this is probably about right here. So if you want to grab a seat, uh, you can. You can adjust this, whatever's comfortable for you as far as as long as your feet are squarely planted on the ground. And we'll get into posing after this. I just want to show you the lighting setups first. And I'm actually going to have you turn about a quarter turn that way. That's perfect. And you can just sit tight for a second. So generally speaking, when lighting, I like to have my light feathered much in front of my subject. I don't like to aim the light right at them. I don't like the hot spots that lights create. I think light comes best when it gives that wraparound effect. So you'll see the back of this umbrella, I'm going to line that up with the front, almost his ear, and let the light wrap around. So if you want more direct light, you can angle it in more. But for this, this umbrella is so large, we're going to bring it in and let this nice light just wrap around. I also like to light at a certain height. So for all of you natural light shooters who shoot outdoors, we all know the best time of day is that golden hour, you know, 8 p.m. in June or 7 p.m., depending where you live. Well, at, the reason we like that is because the angle of the sun. It's about 35 degrees above the horizon. When I'm shooting with studio lights, I like to keep that same angle. So generally speaking, I put my lights at about a 30. You don't need to bring a protractor, protractor and measure it out. But just know that about 35 degrees aim downwards is the ideal angle for my lights. Um, if you start lighting too low, you get that up the nose light. It's never flattering. If you light too high, the brow bone and eyelashes will block the light, and you won't get catch light. So about that 35 degree mark for me, and then angle it downwards. Feathered in front, so we have nice soft light. We're going to turn these guys on. And again, I haven't preset any of these. I kind of want to talk you through it how I would in a normal job, so you can see the work flow. And uh, we're not going to introduce our reflector just yet, but we will in about two minutes. So what I'm going to do is I have my camera on. I have my ISO set to 100, because ISO is obviously your sensitivity to light within your camera. I don't know what the lighting is going to be in a location. I might be in a room that has horrible lighting. I might be in a room that has no lighting. I just want my ISO to be low, so that way none of the ambient light's affecting my shot. The next thing I do with my camera is I set it at a 200th of a second. That's because that's one of the maximum sync speeds um, with my Nikon. Some of you guys are Canon, you know, 1 60th of a second, somewhere in there. And then lastly, your f-stop. This is basically personal preference. I generally shoot at f8 for all my business portraits. I like a good depth of field. I like it to be nice and sharp. So f8 is what I've been shooting at for years. So again, ISO 100, a 200th of a second at f8. And then my white balance is balanced for these Profoto lights, which is about 5,500 Kelvin. So that's my general settings. 
The first thing I'm going to do, knowing that I'm at F8, I'm going to set up my light meter here to a 200th of a second at ISO 100. We're already there because I didn't do that before. Grab my transmitter here so I can pop a flash. And I just want to hold this to our businessman's forehead here and pop till we get F8. So we're going to hold that up here, measure the light. We're at 7, so we need to go up a third of a stop. So we'll go up to about 7.3 here. And we should be pretty darn close to F8. There you go, F8. So that works out. So now we know everything's going to work as far as exposure goes. So I can turn off my meter, load up the camera. And we're not going to do so much posing now as just take a pretty straightforward portrait. Um, John, I'm going to have you come around here and hold the reflector. Actually, you know what? Before you do that, you can come over here. We'll take one without so you can see what it looks like. Um, so this is just your basic one light setup. Um, yeah, I'm going to actually, even though you're seated, I'm going to have you button that top button just to pull the jacket together. Okay. Or at least get it as close as possible. And then that way it just pulls it all there. Pull on your tie for me just so it's down nice and straight. And this portrait's going to be from about the pocket of his jacket on up. So I'm going to have you turn a little bit this way, nose towards me, yep, right in there. And I give all my subjects a three count. I don't know about you guys, but my smile turns cheesy really quick. So I need a three count so that way I know when to smile for a photo. I just pretend everybody needs that, and uh, it just makes it easier. Plus, then they know when the flash is going to pop and all that. So we're going to do one test shot. We're shooting tethered here to the screen. Um, I'll go ahead and show you my tether techniques here. But uh, first, I'm going to take one photo so we have something to work with. So I'm going to have you look right here going to frame it up. I'm not worried about the background, so just looking right here. One, two, three. All right, so this is at F8. You'll see there's quite a bit of shadow here. Let me increase the size of our. So we have, it's, there's a lot of shadow. For me, that's a, way too much shadow, especially for a nice neutral business portrait. So that's where our reflector comes in. Uh, so I'm going to have John come in. We're actually going to hold that. I'll bring, in studio, I have a V-flat. On location, since I'm by myself, I'll have a second stand that I can hang a reflector from. But we're going to bring that almost into frame. So right there, that's perfect. I know you guys can't see, but you obviously see how close he is to them. So we're going to do one more of these. One, two, three. All right. So what I do when I tether is I want everything to look good. So that way, when the client's looking at it, they're seeing the best possible raw file. Obviously, we're not doing any retouching, but we can polish it up and make everybody look bright. So within Capture One, there's a tool called Local Adjustments. That's where I do all my adjustments to almost every file. You can adjust uh, your white balance in here. You can see 5570, that's a standard Kelvin Nikon white balance. No tint. Um, I generally take down the saturation just a little bit in case people are looking red. I, I want to plan for everybody. So he looks great, but I usually reduce it to about negative four or five. Somewhere in there, that's just a little bit of saturation reduction. I then check the exposure. Everything should be good. We metered. There's nothing overexposed. It's pretty clean. The next thing I do that's key is I go to the HDR tabs, which are your highlight and shadow recovery. I take down all the highlights so there's no hot spots. There wasn't on this image, but you never know. Some people come in with a little shine. I don't want them to see that shine on their skin when they're reviewing. So I bring down the highlights, and then I bring up the shadows ever so slightly just so we have a nice neutral image. Uh, let's see. We'll bring them up a little bit more. And then, I'll, and then I'll up the contrast just a little bit under my exposure tab. So something like that. You know, It's a nice, clean portrait. There wasn't a lot to it. It's one light with a reflector. You can see it's very soft light. It's the one XL umbrella with a baffle on it. And I think you know, had we cropped it in from the pocket just above his head, you can see the background. It's, it's white paper, but it went gray, which is fine because everything he's wearing, we'll be able to cut that out nicely. There's a good, clean edge. So this is my general business, business portrait setup. So with that, you know, I'll go through and take an entire law firm's pictures with these. But sometimes I like to get a little, a little more fancy with the lighting, add an extra elements.